I'm Tom Prince with Western New York Athletics, and you are at our next edition of the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. And more coaches. We've got some great teams. We go from north, south. We're all over the place on this one, and we're going to be able to cover all of Western New York right here. So my first guest, Dave Giancola, West Seneca East. Mike Janish, Silver Creek Forestville. And Greg Bell from Akron. Guys, thanks for joining me. So, guys, my first question is, obviously, we got a lot going on. Personally, though, how are you guys doing? Dave, how are you making out right now? So it's been definitely challenging, but we're trying to focus on the fact that you know, we get to spend some extra time together, which is not a bad thing. That's great. Mike, how about yourself? How are you doing? Well, going back to teaching <clears throat> this year, I've had to recreate a lot of lessons. So that's what I'm spending most of my time doing now. Wow. And Greg, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Um, just uh, obviously disappointed uh, that we're not on the field, but uh, trying to keep things in perspective, obviously, uh, you know, with thousands of people dying every day around the country, including many in our own community, you know, just trying to keep that in perspective and uh, understand that our priority is keeping our kids and uh, their families safe. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. Couldn't agree with you guys more. So with that, let's get into our questions, though. Okay, so we've got some fun questions for you guys today. My first question is, who was the person or event that has the most influence on you as a coach in baseball? Mike, let's start out with yourself. When I started coaching many, many moons ago, uh, the varsity coach was a guy named Mike Retchless out of Olean, who was one of the <clears throat> true baseball minds in the, in the Southern tier. He taught me an awful lot of baseball in the first couple of years that I was coaching. Not that I didn't think I knew everything, but certainly he taught me an awful lot more than I ever thought I knew. Wow. Wow. That's a great one. And coach Bell, how about yourself, Greg? Um, I'd have to go back to my own high school coach, uh, Tom Wetson. Um, yeah, he was a uh, phys ed teacher and athletic director at, uh, at Akron for uh, I think almost 37 years. Um, I played for him uh, back in the 70s and, uh, you know, just a great character guy. Um, I admired the way he led his life off the field in addition to uh, how he handled himself in the, uh, in the gymnasium and the uh, athletic fields. And, uh, you know, he was all about accountability. And I think that's, uh, that's what he instilled in me. And that's uh, what I've tried to carry on through, uh, through my teams, responsibility, character, accountability. That's great. And Dave, how about yourself? You know, I think I have to go back to high school myself, uh, Cleveland Hill. Uh, the person who comes to mind is a man by the name of Tom Ronald. <clears throat> I actually played basketball for him, but we were both multi-sport guys. And uh, I remember how well he, he seemed to have his priorities in order. And even at my young age, uh, I remember really appreciating how he put his family first. He put us as students and as people first. And it really stuck with me then and, and even to this day. In fact, you know, when people ask me, you know, who is my inspiration for going into teaching and coaching, uh, he's the person that I always cite. He, he treated his players and everyone around him with respect, and you really felt like he cared about you. And, and that stayed with me throughout my career and even in my personal life. Wow, that's a great one. So those, that, that was a great answer to that question right there, guys. That's some... Uh... It, it's always great just to know how we get started, how things, what molds us, what, what motivates us. And those are some great answers right there. So my next one's going to go more in the baseball field. So certain coaches have a different philosophy when it comes to hitting. Some believe that you got to jump on the first pitch. The first time there's a strike that comes through, you better be swinging at it because it's going to be the best one you're going to see. Others think it's better to see as many pitches as possible. Make the count go as long as you can make the pitcher work. Everybody has a different philosophy on what what's works. 
So my question is, what is your philosophy and why? Greg, how about you? Let's start with you. You know, we want our kids to be aggressive early in the count, obviously, because the majority of high school pitchers are going to start you with a fastball. And, uh, you know, coaches want pitchers pitching ahead. But we also want them to understand situations that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the size of the strike zone varies depending on the count. You know, 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, 3-1, that strike zone's tiny for you. You're looking for your pitch. You know, when you're down in the count, you know, that strike zone expands, obviously. You don't want to get banged on a pitch that two, that's two inches off the plate. You know, high school strike zone obviously is different than a college and a, and a uh, or a, a major league baseball strike zone. You know, and, and that's not a knock on, on uh, high school umpires. That's that's just reality. So, you know, again, understanding situations and uh, but again, you know, if you see that fastball down the middle of the plate early in the count, man, we want you uh, we want you hacking. Great. Dave, how about you? We like to talk about quality of bats and making sure that when you are in the box, um, however it turns out, you can come back to the dugout and feel like you had a quality of bat no matter what the result was. Um, you know, you've heard the cliche that you can bat 300 and you're in the Hall of Fame. That means seven out of 10 times by a traditional sense you failed, but we'll talk about situations where you don't get a hit, but it was still a successful at bat. You moved a runner over, you worked the count. Um, the example that I like to use is you might have an eight or nine pitch at bat that ends in a strikeout. That to me is more valuable than maybe an opposite field bloop single that you happen to get just because of sheer luck. You chased a pitch that was out of the zone and you wound up on first and it goes in the book as a hit, but was it really a quality at bat? So we like to talk about making sure that you make every at bat count. Don't judge it by the results in terms of whether you had a hit or you didn't get a hit. Uh, try to look at it from the big picture. And if at the end of the season, your quality at bat percentage is high, then that's certainly going to help us as a team. There you go. Mike, how about yourself? I'm a believer that every kid has his own way to hit. You can try to uh, push aggressive style. You can have them sit back and swing later in, in the count. Some kids are more comfortable waiting a pitch or two. Some are more comfortable swinging at the first pitch. You want them to be as comfortable in the box as possible. Obviously, if you can get that eight or nine or 10 pitch at bat, that's going to get the pitcher out of the game a little bit quicker, especially in the days of pitch count. But if you're going to wait for the uh, at bat to get long, then maybe you're going to miss that pitch. You could have hit hard. It's got to be strictly up to the kid, how they feel, what they seem to do better, uh, because confidence is a big thing when you get into the batter's box. Yeah, no doubt about that. So you can see why it was such a good question. Very different philosophies sometimes on exactly what to do. And Mike, I think you hit the nail on the head, though. Sometimes the philosophy does change per player, right? And where you're really going to change that philosophy based on the strengths and weaknesses of that certain player. So there's no doubt about it. So great answers, guys. Now we get into what I always call the fun part of the program, where we now we get to recognize your players and what the makeup of your teams are going to be. So first, let's start. We're going to start out with Dave over at West Seneca East. Dave, you're in a very tough division. You know that, where you are going to see unbelievable pitching and unbelievable teams day in and day out in that division. You are led by somebody right now getting big recognition with inside New York State as a top player at his age group right now is New York State. You've got some veterans that are also part of that staff. Let's talk about the makeup of West Seneca East. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Tom, when you talked about, um, uh, we actually have a couple of guys at the top of our pitching rotation, uh, Jackson Strong, who is, you know, I, I realize I might offend some people in West Seneca when I say this, although I don't think too many, because he's highly regarded. He might be the best athlete right now in West Seneca. Uh, he, along with Cam Whippier, who's a D1 commit to Albany uh, for next year. Uh, they've been with me now for, well, this will be Cam's fourth year. I want to make sure I don't speak in past tense. We're, we're going <laughs> to still keep a, a positive vibe here that we're going to have a season. Uh, but with Cam and Jackson at the top of our rotation, uh, which goes seven or eight deep, pitching was definitely going to be, is definitely going to be uh, the strength of our squad this year. Uh, even our number three, and I want to put that in quotes, Mark Sanfilippo has been with me since his freshman year. 
Uh, all three of them are great kids, great work ethic. Um, just they come from great families. Um, they're really our three-headed monster on the mound. And we only graduated one full-time starter from last year. So we're a veteran club, um, nine, 10 seniors. Uh, we bring back Austin Meidenbauer, our jack of all trades, our team MVP, first team all-leaguer, a leader, uh, Cam Cachati, uh, who's been a, a key cog in our football team the last few years, which has had a lot of success. He was an all-league player. Um, and we've got his bat in the middle of the order. Uh, but our pitching staff, uh, especially, the depth that we have there, our team defense, um, really excited for whatever you know the season ends up being. We, we're supposed to be in Myrtle Beach right now, as are some other schools or down south. Um, and I remember when I told the guys that the meeting was canceled or the trip was canceled, I think they handled it better than I did. I mean, it's just a great group of seniors, a great group of kids. I've been looking forward to this season as much as any. Um, on paper, and I know this is kind of a dangerous thing for any coach to say, especially in our division, and, and there, there's good ball across Western New York, but ECIC2 is especially deep. Um, this, it, on paper, was a team that I was feeling very good about and uh, hope that we get a chance to go out there and, and, and make some noise in, like you said, a very, uh, very good division. Yeah, no doubt. And it, and it would have been a stacked pitching division this year, too, oh, yeah. what it was going to be. You know, no yeah. about that. So, okay, let's go right now. We're going to go over to Silver Creek and Forestville. Mike, you've got right now some veteran players. You were going to have some nice pitching that was going to come back for your team this year, too, to give you guys an advantage right now in your conference. No doubt you've got some veteran leadership. We got a chance to talk to Spencer also on our last episode from the sidelines. Let's talk about the makeup of Silver Creek Forestville. This is a unique group of kids. We have 10 out of 14 seniors. One of the seniors is a foreign exchange student from, from Japan, which is kind of interesting. The, one of the reasons he came to the United States was to play baseball. So this would be uh, kind of disappointing if he didn't get a chance to do so. But all of the other kids have been there before and they know what it takes to be decent. They were a team that lost out in a couple of very tough games at the end of last year and have been looking forward to this baseball season for several years to come. Uh, we'll bring back very few next year, but right now we're still thinking about this year as, as a possibility if everything uh, seems to go right. Uh, Spencer is one of the top throwers in the Southern tier. Uh, teammate Jeremy Wilcox can uh, throw nearly as quick as as Spencer. Uh, we got a, a fine shortstop uh, in uh, Ethan Brunner. Uh, our catcher is is going to Houghton next year to play, and he will do very well. Chris Van Cherry, and then we have what is necessary on every team: about four or five kids who just plug in the holes around everything else, and. Uh, you don't often get, especially in a smaller school, a lot of kids who can fill holes and can um, play roles. And I, I have a, a bunch of kids this year that could do that. So this will be kind of disappointment if we don't get a chance uh, to get on the field, which obviously is very uh, unlikely at this point in time. Mike, you also have a big game. You're going to be playing at the stadium too. You had uh, you had on the schedule. Am I correct? Or at Bison at the Bison Stadium? Yes, well, we were going to play Gowanda at the stadium, which uh, which have been a fantastic matchup right there. As as we talked a little bit into Gowanda, a young team coming up versus your veteran team. Boy, that would have been a great matchup to see there at the stadium. No doubt about it. So now we're going to go over to uh, to Greg and Akron. Greg, you lost a big player last year. I know that you uh, that you're going to need to fill the shoes. You bringing back though some nice some nice core players on that team. A very tough Niagara Orleans division, as you know, there are some solid pitching right there coming out of Albion, coming out of Medina. There is some top pitching. In fact, last year I thought the Niagara Orleans conference may have been the most underrated conference when it came to pitching last year. So now let's talk about how Akron's going to come out and what Akron looks like for this year. 
Absolutely. Um, I, I agree. I think the NL League is, is one of the most underrated leagues in Western New York. I mean, for two consecutive years, we've sent uh, teams to the state semifinals. But uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I do have a nice core returning, uh, relatively small roster with 12 kids and, and we're, we're young. Uh, we have one senior, five, uh, five juniors, uh, four sophomores and two freshmen. But, uh, you know, the five core guys returning, they were all starters last year. Uh, Mitchell Holtz, um, he's a junior shortstop. He'll, uh, he'll be the top of our pitching rotation also this year. Um, he won five games for us last year, which was really a pleasant surprise. Really good defensive player. Um, I have Adam Meets, um, probably the best athlete on our team. Um, he's a th three-sport athlete. Uh, he was all league in football, all league in basketball. Um, I think he's the best center fielder in the NL League. Um, doesn't he's not flashy, but he is just fundamentally sound in everything that he does. Um, also, another returning player is uh, Jake Mazza. Um, he's going to be moving from left field to uh, first base this year, um, which is actually his natural position. But he did a great job for us last year as a first year uh, varsity player. Um, ended up making uh, second team all league as an outfielder. Um, he, again, he's another three sport athlete. And, you know, actually, this is probably the most athletic team I've ever had. You got a ton of three sport athletes. Every single kid on the roster plays at least two sports, um, which isn't uncommon, obviously, at a, at a small school like ours. But, uh, you know, I, it, it's exciting, for, you know, from, from my perspective. So until it's, it may not translate into success on the baseball field, but uh, it's nice to have some kids with, uh, with, with a lot of athleticism. Uh, another key returnee is uh, our catcher, David Kalinowski. He's a three year varsity player. Um, started for the first time last year, did a solid job. We're looking for him to really take a step up this year. You know, he's again, another three sport athlete. He's a football first kid, um, really bright 1440 SAT 4.0 GPA. You know, he will play football in college somewhere, but uh, you know, he's tough as nails and obviously very smart. And uh, we're excited about what, uh, what he can do behind the plate for us this year. And uh, our fifth returning player is a uh, sophomore, Jack, uh, Klazinski, um, he came up last year as a freshman, uh, did a really nice job uh, as a utility infielder, played a lot of second base and third base. Unfortunately, missed a couple weeks because of illness, which set him back a bit, but uh, we're excited what he, can, uh, what he can do for us. He's also in the pitching mix. And uh, we also have a couple freshmen that uh, are very athletic and uh, they look like they can be versatile players for us, um, Kyle Swift and Andy Roadmesser. So we're going to be looking for them to step up and be able to contribute right away also. But again, you know, very athletic team, you know, a good core and uh, it's a tough league, but, uh, you know, I'm excited about our prospects. Yeah, like I said, it's, I think it's probably the most underrated league in Western New York, like you said, it's just, it's just an unbelievable amount of talent. Just like we're talking about with these two other divisions too. I mean, ECIC too may not be getting its love this year for the talent that's going to be in that division. And then, Mike, I always say your division is underrated because people just don't know them. They don't see enough of them out there playing, and they deserve as much love as any of these other schools that are out there. So we've got three great programs and three great divisions that really need a lot more recognition. So my next question for you guys is, is give me the one or two players on your team that we don't know about yet. Right, they're the they're the next kids that we've got to look to on the Western New York stage to say, look out for this kid because he's going to make an impact in Western New York, and he's got to be on all your radars. So this one, Mike, let's start out with yourself on that one. That's a, a very difficult question because I have several kids that could fit that that criteria. I'm I would off. start out. I would start out off with our first baseman, Luke Spitek, uh, a kid who has been. Uh, a two-year starter for us, uh, very glove-oriented at first, saves an awful lot of, of errors and has figured out his batting style now and should be quite a, a force for us. And then our catcher, Chris Vancheri, uh, what a class kid, uh, undersized catcher who uh, has, a, has an outstanding pop time, throws uh, darts to second base, blocks ball well, and hits the ball ex exceedingly well. Uh, both of those kids, we couldn't go anywhere without those two kids. 
What's it with you and catchers down there? You seem to develop those catchers real well. Luck has it. We may <laughs> not have it next year. You never know. I hear you. Greg, how about yourself? Who would be your players? Uh, I'd have to go back to Mitchell Holtz. Um, you know, he's a kid that uh, he'll be a four-year varsity player. I brought him up as a freshman and uh, put him right into the starting lineup. He did an outstanding job at second base. Um, last year, he split uh, time at uh, shortstop with, uh, with Brandon Orr. Um, and, uh, but he, Mitch is a kid I can play anywhere on the field, and uh, he's going to do an outstanding job. And he, he will definitely play at the next level, just as his brother uh, Derek is, uh, who's currently at Madai. Um, another kid that uh, I expect to have a breakout year is, uh, is uh, Jack Kladzinski, um, the kid that I mentioned before, came up at last year as a freshman. Um, does everything well. Um, he's a baseball first kid, um, and uh, he, he worked great work ethic and uh, demonstrates some leadership qualities already as a sophomore. So I'm excited to see what uh, watch his development over the next couple of years. And Dave, how about yourself? You know, Tom, I'm going to circle back to someone who isn't completely under the radar, but who I think is poised to take his game to a whole other level, and that's Jackson Strong. Um, he's only a junior. Uh, this will be his third year up on varsity. I think that people who aren't aware of who he is already will know his name by the end of this year. Um, he's just a phenomenal athlete. Um, he could play college baseball or college volleyball. Um, he is a five-tool kid. Uh, he is someone who is trending in the direction of becoming a legit player of the year candidate. Uh, in the spirit of your question, though, for someone that's maybe not quite uh, known yet, I would have to say Dominic Meyer. Uh, Dom is a sophomore uh, who has come up through the ranks, was our, our top modified player, our top JV player. He spent some time with us last year as a freshman. Um, he's a catcher. He can play third. He can play in the outfield. Uh, he is just now beginning to scratch the surface of what he can do. Uh, he has some versatility. Uh, he can pitch, although with catching, you know, it's tough to do both. Uh, he is someone who uh, we're looking for, not just this year, but the future to kind of become an anchor uh, for us. That's fantastic. Well, guys, that's the end of my questions here for today. I want to thank you for joining me on the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. I hope the next time we get a chance to talk, it's going to be at one of your games where we're going to be covering you guys on the field. Fingers crossed, but I'll tell you, thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you guys real soon. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Thanks.